Oh, you wanna know how to tuck first? This is how you tuck your shirt and your sweater. Let's start with tucking a button-down shirt. When I don't tuck, it doesn't look horrible because the shirt is faded. It does show my figure, but wait till you compare tucked in look it's a huge difference you see when i'm tucked in my waistline is elevated it looks like my legs are elongated that is a whole point of tucking regardless your height tucking is gonna make your proportion look better now that you can see the magic transformation after you're tucking your shirt let's begin how you can tuck with the button down shirt there's three options for you the full tuck the half tuck and the fringe tuck let me start with the half tuck this one is very much on trend and i think it's very fun if you've never tried it i suggest you give it a shot the half tuck can transform any shirt and make it look casual. It has that undone vibe, but it's deliberate. So if you have a dress shirt that you wear to work Monday through Friday, with a half tuck, you can transform into a casual shirt that you can wear with jeans or khakis on weekends. It opens up so many more options for you. If your jeans is like mine with bottom fly, this one is from seven, then the first step is to make sure the buttons on your shirt are aligned with the buttons on your jeans because otherwise when they are misaligned, it looks pretty obvious that they are crooked. If your jeans is a traditional zipper, then you don't have to worry too much about this step. Next step is to unbutton your shirt. How many? It depends on if your jeans is high rise, mid rise, or low rise. And and how long your shirt is. The rule of thumb is to just do enough so that it shows the top of your jeans. For me, I needed to undo two buttons. And now, do you have a favorite side? I don't, so it doesn't matter which side you want to tuck in. So grab one side of your shirt. You want to smooth it to make it look natural. That's it, and you're done. With the half tuck, you only need to do the front section of your shirt. You don't have to tuck the back, but it's really important that you do check in the mirror to make sure the back also looks good. See, sometimes this can happen. So you do want to make sure you smooth out the back of your shirt and make sure it's not flipped and it doesn't look messy. This is pretty happy middle ground for tucked and untucked because the untucked half of your shirt is hiding your stomach and the other half which is tucked, it shows your waistline and makes your legs look longer and also define your waist. If you like this video so far, give me thumbs up. If you don't like it, give me thumbs down. I would like to know that too. If you are new to my channel, hit that subscribe button. I would love to have you come back. Now let's talk about the French tuck. I get the most questions about this because obviously it's a very famous tuck. So everybody's heard of it. And this is how you do it. All you need to do is to grab the front tip of your shirt and stick it under your jeans. The idea of the French tuck is to only tuck the very bottom of the shirt because that will allow the rest of the fabrics to fold over at a more flattering length. This looks more natural. It's less stiff compared with a full tuck. This is gonna give you the effortless chic look. You can leave the back of your shirt hanging as is, or you can fold over the back of your shirt a little bit as well, just to make the transition look more smooth. There you go, here you have a fringe tuck. It's not meant to be exact science, so don't stress if you're tucking in the right amount of two inches, three inches, because I can't tell you that, because we all have different body and every shirt may have a different length, so there's no exact science. It's just an art. The best test is ask yourself, does this make you feel comfortable or does it make you feel self-conscious? This is making you feel casual, and you feel totally comfortable then you're doing the right way next the full tuck we all know how to do it you stick your shirt under your pants or your jeans all the way around the key is to make sure it's smooth and you don't show too much bulge this works the best for dress shirt and especially in work setting interview client meetings this looks more formal and more polished 
if you happen to have a midsection concern, sometimes you might feel a little self-conscious. You may not want to tuck. In that case, French tuck can help. But besides French tuck, here's two other great ways you can achieve the same purpose without tucking. The first is to tie the knot on your shirt, and the second is to use the hair tie to achieve the same purpose. First, let's look at how you tie the knot on your shirt. Using this, you can convert any shirt as long as it's long enough, you can make it a tie knot shirt. I'm doing the last, very last button on my shirt, and then you tie the knot, then you smooth out two sides of your shirt. And there you go, your shirt now looks shortened. Now your legs look longer and your torso looks shorter. If you are interested in elongating your legs, I have a lot of other tricks. I have another video on this topic, so make sure you check out this other video as well. The next option is to use a hair tie. I am very excited about this because you can really get so creative with this. And this applies to not just your shirt, it can also use it for your sweater as well. And I'm gonna show you how to use both. When you do a hair tie, you wanna make sure your hair tie is the same color as your sweater. All you need to do is to grab the tip, the front tip of your shirt, to the desired length. How long do you want your tie to be? How long do you want your shirt to be? And tie the hair tie around it. And now you have the knot. You can just leave it as is because your shirt and your hair tie is the same color. Nobody can tell you are using a hair tie. You can also make the knot a little smaller. It's up to you. Get creative with this. You can just stop here, or you want to take it one step further, you can roll up your shirt and hide the knot. This also works. This is especially important if you feel like the knot is making you, somehow making you feel self-conscious, then you wanna hide it. This is a great way to hide it, make your shirt look more cropped. There, I was doing it in the front. Another great way, which I really love, is to do it on the side. You can get really creative with this. When you do it on the side, this looks even more natural. Now, it looks like your shirt has become asymmetrical hem. This is very flattering for anybody with a midsection concern because now you don't have that horizontal line on your shirt anymore. Now let's look at how you can tuck your sweater. Yes, you can do that with your sweater too. I'm gonna show you a medium width sweater and a cable knit sweater. Yes, you can tuck in even your cable knit sweater. Before you start tucking your sweater, very important, I want to remind you, you probably want to wear a more relaxed fit jeans. Like this one, I am wearing a Topshop boyfriend jeans versus the skinny jeans because the sweater, no matter how thin they are, they are still gonna be more volume compared with your shirt. So you wanna make sure your jeans has enough space and it will not look too much bulge when you're tucking your sweater. Let me start with this medium waist sweater. This is not very long, so it looks okay when I do not tuck. But obviously when you tuck, it again improves your proportion immediately. This sweater is not completely thick, so I can tuck it in fully. So you can do this if that's what you like. My favorite way to do a sweater tuck is a fringe tuck. Again, what you do is just as a shirt, you grab the bottom of your sweater, only grabbing the center of your sweater, and you tuck it carefully under your jeans, and then you smooth out the two sides, make the transition look natural. Now there you go, you have the French tuck right there, and in the back, you don't have to do anything, or if you want, you can also fold it up a little bit just to make the transition look smooth. Once again, a French tuck is meant to look effortless. It doesn't need to be very formal. It should look very casual. So do not stress if your tuck is perfect or not. It does not matter. Now let's look at how you tuck cable knit sweater. This is really a challenge. First of all, because 
cable knit sweater has so much volume. In general, they're just very hard to wear. So when you are tucking your cable knit sweater, you have to make sure your sweater is not too long. Otherwise, it's just not gonna work because of the volume plus the length. This is a cable knit sweater I got from H&M last winter. I really love it. This length is perfect for me to tuck it in because it's not too long. So all you need to do is to grab the bottom of your sweater, just the tip of it, because you are not gonna tuck entirely, you are just doing the fringe tuck. Smooth it under your jeans, just the middle part of your jeans. And then the sides of the sweater, you can smooth it out a little bit, fold it up a little bit so that it looks like natural. And the back of your sweater, you don't have to do anything. That's it, here you have a fringe tucked cable knit sweater. This is my cashmere sweater from Banana Republic. It's lightweight that makes the tie very easy. Front of your shirt to the desired length and then tie the knot around it. Then if you like, fold it up so that you can hide the tie completely. Or you can also do this on the side. Have fun this. There's so many ways you can change the look of your sweater just by tying a knot with a hair tie. And now it's time to reveal the answers for the trivia. None of those were invented by the French. As for the name for the French tuck, the person who invented it is a British fashion designer and it's called French tuck because his last name is Franz. The tucking when you have a heavy sweater like this is it controls the volume. This is critical. Cable knit sweaters are very hard to style and when you can tuck it, that controls the volume and makes it much more flattering. This applies to anybody of any height and it's especially very important if you happen to be petite like me and you want to wear something slightly oversized, this is how you do it. I do have a whole other video on this topic so make sure you check out this video as well. 